بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد النبي الامي وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمه وهي لنا من امرنا رشدا وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد النبي الامي وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم الحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته uh, we were asked to give a short quranic reflection in this blessed month of Ramadan, and this is our second of what will now be three, inshallah, sessions, that uh, today we wanted to just reflect on a few select verses from Surah Al-Anbiya, the chapter on the Prophets, Ali Musalam. The first verse, A'udhu Billahi Min Shaitan Ar-Rajim, Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Iqtarabba lil-nasi hisabuhum, wa hum fi ghaflatim mu'alidun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins by stating after the basmalah that the reckoning of people has drawn near to them while they are but turning away in heedlessness. And so the inauguration, the beginning of this sublime chapter of the Quran essentially is on the principle of dhikr because what is being blamed and censured is ghafla the lack of remembrance, the lack of attentiveness, the lack of focus, the lack of presence with respect to the divine, with respect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his message, his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so at the heart of our religion is the remembrance of Allah, the remembrance of God Almighty. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said in Sahih Bukhari, مَثَلُ الَّذِي يَذْكُرُ رَبَّهُ وَالَّذِي لَا يَذْكُرُ رَبَّهُ that the example of the one who makes remembrance of his Lord and the one that does not make remembrance of his Lord is like the example of the living and the dead. In other words, there is a spiritual life just like there is a physical life. And the life of the heart is the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah ta'ala begins the chapter on prophets, peace be upon them all, with a censure and rebuke for the lack of spiritual life, the lack of remembrance of Allah, that the hisab of people has drawn near, utterly near, ever near, while the state of people, most people, is wahum fi ghaflatim mu'ridun. And the fi has to do with immersion. So immersed in ghafla, immersed in heedlessness, inattentiveness to the divine, mu'ridun, while they're but turning away. Uh, the remembrance of Allah is the basis of drawing near to Allah. Abu Ali Daqaq, the teacher of Imam Al-Qushayri, he said, Al-Dhikru Manshurul Wilaya. The remembrance of Allah is the very proclamation and edict of sainthood, of friendship with Allah, of proximity with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Dhikru Manshurul Wilaya. Faman wuffiqa lidhikri faqad u'ati al-manshur. So whoever is granted the tawfiq to make dhikr, whoever is granted the inspiration and the the divine support in in remembering Allah, then they have truly been granted this manshur, they have been granted this edict, this proclamation, this stamp of approval of wilaya, of friendship, being a protege of Allah, a wali of Allah. وَمَنْ سُلِبَ الذِّكْرِ فَقَدْ عُزِلْ And he says, rahimahullah, but whoever is such that the remembrance of Allah is removed from them, then they have been demoted. They are no longer in of a rank of wilaya. And so Allah Ta'ala begins this surah with an invitation to remember him and an invitation to draw near to him and an invitation to be like those who are the masters of his remembrance, which is the topic of the chapter, the Anbiya, the Prophets, they are the ones most immersed in Allah's remembrance. The second verse we wanted to highlight in this sublime surah is verse 23, in which Allah Ta'ala says, لا يسألوا عما يفعلوا وهم يسألون He, capital H, is not and cannot be questioned about what he does, yet they shall be questioned. لا يُسْأَلُوا عَمَّا يَفْعَلُوا وَهُمْ يُسْأَلُونَ Allah Ta'ala is not questioned about his actions, but we as human beings, as moral agents, 
created finite temporal moral agents dependent on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, are, are questioned. What was the beginning of the surah? What has drawn near for people is their very accounting. And so we are going to be questioned. This is moral responsibility. But Allah is not asked about what he does. لا يسألوا عما يفعلوا وهم يسألون. In the classical Sunni heritage, a theological heritage, both the Ash'ari and the Maturidi traditions, this is arguably the most off-sided verse when dealing with theolog theological issues, issues such as uh, the problem of evil and suffering, what's called today in Western philosophy, the problem of evil and suffering, the, the, the issues of free will, issues of moral agency, arguably the most off-sided Quranic verse in the context of theological treatments in the classical Sunni tradition uh, of this philosophical problem is this verse. And there's a lot of theology in this surah, particularly. Of course, the entire Quran is an expression of the oneness of Allah. But there are certain verses in this surah in particular that deal with perplexing philosophical problems. And this is one of them. Allah is not asked about what he does. They shall be asked. This is, it returns to Tawheed. This returns to our affirmation of oneness of Allah. And this is unique to the Islamic tradition because in our tradition, we affirm an uh, omnipotence for Allah that, that has no compromise. Other religious traditions including in, in the Christian tradition, various denominations of Christianity and other religions, there is some limitation. Uh, it's very often that there's some limitation uh, in, in the theological discourse that's, that's placed, that's, that's ascribed to the divine power. And this is done in trying to grapple, philosophically grapple with dealing with tribulation and evil in the world. In Islamic tradition, based on the Quran and Sunnah, the teaching of the Prophet وسلم, revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, based on our, uh, what the ulama have codified and explored using reason, using logic, as well as, of course, revelation and ijma and the, and the, and the, and the, and the teachings of the salaf, all of these the usuli principles that are used in our epistemology, that there, we ascribe no limit to Allah's power. Everything that exists in the world exists only because Allah Ta'ala existentiates it. He is the creator of all things. Allah Ta'ala says, say, Allah is the creator of every single thing and he is the one, the all dominating. But out of etiquette, we ascribe only the good to Allah and we ascribe the evil in the world to our own shortcomings, the shortcomings of the ego, the ego of human beings, or the devil himself, the shaitan. So there is an etiquette of a, a ascription, and our Prophet ﷺ in his dua, he would say, as reported in Sahih Muslim, in a lengthy dua, the Prophet said, ﷺ, Al khair kulluhu bi yadayk wa sharru la yaudu ilayk. He said, ﷺ, good, all of it is in your possession, O Allah. And evil does not return to you. Evil does not return to you. And Imam Nawawi clarifies that after affirming the consensus of ju Islamic jurists and theologians and hadith masters uh, and, and, and all of the, sc the scholars of Islam in Sunni orthodoxy that we affirm that in terms of creating, that Allah creates both the good and evil everything that exists, whether good and evil in the world, Allah is the creator of it. Yet Imam Nawawi says the tafsir of this dua is, there's different interpretations. One of them has to do with the etiquette, the adab of ascription. So the good that exists in the world, we ascribe it back to Allah. Al khair kulluhu bi yadayk. Wa sharru la yaudu ilayk. But evil does not return to you, O Allah. And so we do not, out of etiquette, we don't ascribe the evil to Allah. We ascribe it to the evil tendencies in the world, whether the shortcomings of the ego or the shaitan himself. But everything in the, in the cosmos is the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as for understanding why Allah ta'ala does what he does in the world, when it comes to tribulation and the evil that exists in the world, 
Allah Ta'ala gives the most profound response in this verse. لا يسألوا عما يفعلوا وهم يسألون He is not asked about what he does, but they shall be asked. But they shall be asked. The moral agents of humankind and jinnkind, we will be asked. اقترب للناس حسابهم But Allah Ta'ala is not asked. Allah Ta'ala is the omnipotent. And Dhunun al-Misri, one of the great early uh, scholars of spirituality in our tradition, he was a Nubian Egyptian uh, master of spirituality, the Nun al-Misri, rahimahullah. He was once asked about Tawheed. He was asked, what is Tawheed? And he said, أَن تَعْلَمَ أَنَّ قُدْرَةَ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى فِي الْأَشْيَاءِ بِلَا مِزَاج وَسُنْعَهُ لِلْأَشْيَاءِ بِلَا عِلَاج وَعِلَّةَ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ سُنْعَهُ سُنْعُهُ وَلَا عِلَّةَ لِسُنْعِهِ وَأَنَّ كُلَّ مَا تُسُورِكَ فِي وَأَنَّ مَهْمَا تُسُورِكَ فِي فِي قَلْبِكَ شَيْءٌ فِي نَفْسِكَ شَيْءٌ فَاللَّهُ تَعَالَى بِخِلَافِهِ So he says, when he was asked about Tawheed, Imam Bunun, rahimahullah, he said, أَنْ تَعْلَمَ أَنَّ قُدْرَةَ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى فِي الْأَشْيَاءِ بِلَا مِزَاج He says, for you, Tawheed is for you to realize that Allah's power, His omnipotent power in the things of this world is without any mizaj. There's no, uh, we don't affirm causative natures in the world. That Allah directly creates everything that exists in the world. And what, what we perceive in science as the nature of a thing, that's simply the pattern that Allah Ta'ala creates it with. It's the consistent sunnah Allah. It's the consistent way Allah creates things. But Allah can interrupt his pattern anytime he wants, and that's called kharqul ada. It's a type of miracle. For example, in the Surah Al Anbiya, in the same surah, Allah Taala uh, describes the the story of Prophet Ibrahim as a young man, and he broke the idols. And at the end of that, when they wanted to punish him, they threw him in a fire, and Allah Taala said, commanded the fire, Ya naru kuni, bardan wa salaman ala Ibrahim. O fire, be cool and peaceful upon Abraham. So there's no uh, so, so what we, what the scientist uh, uh, intuits or uh, abstracts of the world in terms of quote unquote natures, and the natural phenomena of the world, these are but divine patterns of activity. Sunnah Allah fi khalqihi. It's it's Allah's sunnah. It's Allah's consistent way that He does things, which He can interrupt anytime He wants. And so, the first principle of Tawheed, see the Dunun and Misri, He says, "An ta'alama anna qudrat Allah ta'ala fil ashya." Bila mizaj. What? So, so, so everything that exists in the world is a direct creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he says, Wa anna sun'ahu fil ashya bila ilaj. And that when Allah does things in the world, it's not using means and instruments. Like when we do things as, as created beings, if we want to do anything, we have to use means and instruments, whether our physical limbs or the tools that we, that we make use of in the world. But Allah Ta'ala, He has no need of anything. And so He does not uh, use any instruments in carrying out His decrees. He simply creates it directly. And what appears to be, again, what appears in the world in the natural order of processes, of, of, of any process of growth or maturation, it's not a a means that Allah uses as, as an instrument. Rather, it's the way He manifests His direct creation. And then the third thing He says, Rahimullah, wa illa to kulli shay sunahu, wa la illa to li sunahi. And the and the real at, at bottom, the fundamental, absolute reason for things in the world is that is that Allah does it. And there's no fundamental reason behind His action. Because the ultimate fundamental reason of everything is Mashiatullah. It's the will of Allah. Masha Allahu kan wa ma lam yasha lam yakun. Whatever Allah wills shall definitely exist. And what He does not will cannot exist by definition. And so the, 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 there's no illa of Allah's actions. Rather, it's His Mashia. It's pure divine selection. And that finally, whatever you, whatever you might imagine, uh, regarding Allah, Allah is 
far exalted above that. This is Tawheed, according to our tradition, uh, upon the, uh, in, in the expression of Imam Dhunun al-Misri. And then related to this philosophical, what's called in Western philosophy, the problem of evil, we can go to the example of the prophets themselves, peace be upon them all, to see the proper etiquette in dealing with tribulation. And of course, the entire surah, this entire chapter is filled with profound examples. We just wanted to highlight one salient example, the example of Nabi Ayyub in verses 83 and 84. Look how Allah Ta'ala describes Nabi Ayyub, Prophet Job, peace be upon him. وَأَيُّوبَ إِذْ نَادَ رَبَّهُ أَنِّي مَسَّنِيَ الدُّرْ وَأَنْتَ أَرْحَمُ الرَّاحِمِينَ And Job and Ayyub, when he called upon his Lord, verily, distress has afflicted me. Literally, it's touched me. Masani, Dur, distress, difficulty has, has afflicted me. Wa anta arhamur rahimin, and thou art the most merciful of those who show mercy. This is the etiquette. This great prophet, peace be upon him, he lost health, he lost wealth, he lost family, tribulation after tribulation after tribulation. What's his response? He simply expresses his, his circumstance and he affirms Allah's attributes. In anni masani dur, this is my condition. Difficulty has afflicted me. But you're still the most merciful of those who show mercy. He doesn't, he doesn't challenge Allah. He doesn't, he doesn't demand an answer from Allah. Allah is not asked about what he does. They are, they are asked. Human beings and jinn are asked. Moral agents on earth are asked. Compare this, compare this the Quranic presentation of Nabi Ayyub, to the biblical narrative of Prophet Job. And what, what a vast difference. But Allah Ta'ala clarifies the good name of, of all of his prophets. And here with Nabi Ayyub, Prophet Job, peace be upon him, he simply expressed his condition and affirmed Allah's attributes. Whatever difficulty we're going through does not change the fact that Allah is all merciful, does not change the fact that Allah is all forgiving, does not change the fact that Allah is all kind. He remains with those attributes in our most difficult of circumstances. And subhanAllah, he did not even ask dua for alleviation, although that's valid. There's nothing wrong with that. But look at the sublime etiquette. He simply expressed his pain, expressed, expressed his circumstance, peace be upon him, and then returned to the attribute of Allah. Wa anta arhamur rahimin. So what does Allah Ta'ala say in the very next verse? Fastajabna lah. And the fa is often used for immediacy. So without undue delay, we responded to him. فَكَشَفْنَا مَا بِهِ مِنْ دُرْ And we removed the distress that was upon him. وَآتَيْنَاهُ أَهْلَهُ وَمِثْلَهُمْ مَعَهُمْ And we bestowed upon him his family and the like of them with them. رَحْمَةً مِنْ عِنْدِنَا As a tremendous mercy from us. Nabi Ayyub said, أَنْتَ أَرْحَمُ الرَّاحِمِينَ and Allah Ta'ala responded with a profound gift. And he said, this is rahmatan min indina. If we want the mercy of Allah, we affirm the mercy of Allah. Oh Allah, you're the most merciful of those who show mercy. That good opinion of Allah will only unfold with a merciful outcome. And so he affirmed the mercy of Allah. And then Allah responded with so much mercy. And Allah, affir Allah Ta'ala states it as such, rahmatan min indina, as a great mercy from our presence and a reminder to the worshipers as we worship in this month of Ramadan Allah is reminding us through the stories of the prophets that Allah's relief is always there and we have to but affirm Allah's mercy we have to but remain in a state of patience and contentment with his decree subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, Imam Hussein Ibn Ali Ibn Abi Talib the great Imam of our tradition, the grandson of the Prophet وسلم, he once said, Man ala husni lahu, lam lahu lahu. Whoever relies on the beautiful selection, Allah's beautiful choice for him, he will not want other than what Allah chose for him. Whoever relies on the beautiful selection of Allah for him, 
that person will not desire other than what Allah chose for him. That's the example of the Prophet ﷺ. That's the example of Nabi Ayyub, Prophet Job, peace be upon him. That's the example of our blessed Prophet, the, the best of creation, Sayyidina Muhammad ﷺ. They were always content with what, what Allah Ta'ala chose for them, peace be upon them all. And then they, Allah unfolded his mercy in the most profound of ways. Uh, and how does Allah Ta'ala in another chapter of the Quran describe Nabi Ayyub, peace be upon him? Ni'm al-abd. What a great servant. What a great servant. What is this? Dhikra lil abideen. It's a reminder to those who, who are true servants of Allah. And who, who is the example? Ni'm al-abd. What a great servant. And we'll just conclude with the very last verse of this sublime chapter in which Allah Ta'ala says, uh, and, 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 and this surah is, in many ways is a consolation to our Prophet وسلم, all the, the challenges and the difficulties and the distresses that he faced in, in the Sira uh, vis-a-vis the Quraysh and those people that were harming him and his companions anhum, the, the reminder of the Prophets والسلام, because it's like that's the, that's, those are the brethren of our Prophet وسلم, and he's the Imam of them and so, so Allah Ta'ala consoles the blessed heart of our Prophet ﷺ with the example of, of the other Prophets What does Allah Ta'ala say in the end, at the end of the, of the chapter? قَالَ رَبِّحْكُمْ بِالْحَقِّ وَرَبُّنَا الرَّحْمَانُ الْمُسْتَعَانُ عَلَى مَا تَصِفُونَ That he said, my Lord, Judge with truth. Rahman, And our Lord is Ar-Rahman, the most merciful, the beneficent. Al-Musta'an, whose help is sought. Alama tasifun, against all uh, what you ascribe to him. All the incorrect things that people say about Allah, about truth, about justice, etc. Rahman, Al-Musta'an. Again, the mercy of Allah and al-musta'an, Allah al-musta'an. Allah is the one whose help we seek. Allah Ta'ala is the one whose help we seek. And so, man i'tamada ala husni ikhtiyari lahi lahu, lam yatamanna ghayra makhtar Allahu lahu. Again, this beautiful statement of Imam, Imam Hussain, that whoever relies on Allah's beautiful selection for him, that person will not choose other than what Allah chose for him. And, uh, one of the great inheritors of our Prophet وسلم, Imam Abu Hassan al-Shadili, rahimahullah, he once said, "Man in qata'a an tadbirihi ila tadbirillah, wa an ikhtiyarihi ila ikhtiyarillah, wa an nadrihi ila nadrillah, wa an masalihihi ila ilmillah. Atahu Allahu husn al-lub, wa yatarab wa yataratabu alayhi al-zikr wal-fikr, wa la aradhalika min al-khasais." This is a beautiful aphorism of the great Imam uh, Abu Hassan al-Shadili, rahimahullah. He said, whoever distances himself from his own tadbir, his own sense of control of his life, his own sense of governing his own affairs, to the tadbir of Allah, to the divine governance of our lives, to the divine governance of one's affairs. And whoever distances himself from his own personal autonomous choice, thinking that it has uh, power and rather resigns to this choice and selection of Allah. And whoever distances himself from his own vantage to the vantage of Allah, the, 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 how Allah Ta'ala sees things. In other words, from his omniscient, omniscience and his, his sight of the world. And whoever distances himself from his own, the concern for his own welfare being, being inundated with one's own, uh, you know, what do I get out of every circumstance? And rather resigns to the knowledge of Allah, whoever does all of this, Allah grants such a person beautiful intellect. Allah grants such a person beautiful intellect. And based on that beautiful intellect, there, there will be real remembrance of Allah and real contemplation of the divine attributes. And the great Imam ends, he says, He says, I, and I still don't consider that to be 
what makes someone of the elite of Allah's friends. That's still general friendship with Allah. That's the foundation upon which more is built for elite friendship. Uh, for us uh, elementary, simple uh, uh, Muslims just trying to struggle with our basics, it's a great khasais for the likes of us. Just a taste of, 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 of that level that he described, rahimahullah. And so, what, so this is beautiful intelligence. Beautiful intelligence is the way of the prophets, peace be upon them all. Beautiful intelligence is the way of these great imams, is to consign our affairs to Allah, to trust that what he is doing with our lives is far better than our own scheming and planning and how we can manipulate things, this tadbir, this, this sense of manipulation of things. Whoever, whoever distances himself from his own manipulation of events and, and consigns his, his life to, the, to Allah's manipulation of events, this is a, the way that a person has a spiritual intellect, husn al lub, and a beautiful one at that. And uh, this is beauty in our tradition. And interestingly enough, the great Imam, what's his name? Abu Hassan. Hassan has to do with beauty. And he is uh, also a descendant of the Prophet ﷺ through uh, the grandchildren. And what were their names? Hassan and Hussein. And we quoted Imam Hussein. These are beautiful people because. Uh, not just outwardly beautiful, but inwardly, their 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 amazing hearts realized imams of these meanings. So husna lub, and what comes from husna lub? A beautiful intellect, a, sp a beautiful spiritual intellect. A dhikr wal fikr, wa yataratabu alehi a dhikr wal fikr. True remembrance of Allah and true contemplation. And how did the surah begin? That iqtarba lil nasi hisabuhum. So a censure and rebuke of lack of dhikr and fikr. And so it all comes back full circle. Dhikr and fikr is, is when we're not in ghafla. So we ask Allah Ta'ala to make his people realized in these sublime meanings, to make us true followers, true emulators of the beautiful examples of all the prophets, peace be upon them all, and in particular of our great prophet, Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, the Imam al-Mursaleen, the, the best of all the prophets, the best of all creation, peace be upon them all, وسلم, we ask Allah Ta'ala to make this Ramadan the best of our Ramadans, to, to, to open our hearts to the light of the, of the Quran, to the light of the prophetic example, and that we emerge every day is better than the prior and that we emerge more and more uh, awake and aware of what's truly beneficial and cognizant and cautious about what's truly harmful for both our worldly and our other worldly affairs. Barakallahu feekum wa rafu minkum. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.